If you ask me to look at what's the most challenging aspect of these projects, I think it's really the size of the projects. At the headquarters level, of course, we have a lot of interface with, with keeping all our stakeholders uh, involved and informed. And at the same time, making sure that the programs and projects are getting what they need in order to execute their programs and projects. The most challenging part of my job is to is to look far ahead and plan activities to try to see problems as far ahead in, in the future as I can. The biggest challenge I have is, is balancing risk. Um, every, every decision we have brought to us as a, as a management team involves some aspect of risk in either the technical, the cost, or the schedule arena, and sometimes trading those risks against each other. There are really two major aspects or two major challenges that you have when you're managing a project. One is managing the people, empowering them, making sure that they understand what the job is that you expect of them, and getting the roadblocks out from out in front of them so that they can get their job done. The second one, of course, is to make decisions in a timely fashion. After many starts and stops over the last 10 years in space transportation, many will often feel like, well, is this really going to happen? Is this really going to go forward? And so keeping the team focused that this is real, this is their time, it is up to them to make it happen, is one of the critical challenges that we face as a leadership team. Well, team building, uh, in my opinion, is, is central to being able to implement projects. If you don't have a team that can work together, then obviously the project is not going to work out the way that you, you thought it would. This is where you develop the ability to agree to disagree at times. Uh, when you do that, that starts the level of respect needed to, to be able to have open communication across your project. You've got to have that open communication to be successful, and that's what team building does. It's, it fosters an environment of open communication. So in order to get anything done successfully, the objective uh, is to um, create an environment that they're all headed towards the same goal and want to accomplish that goal. And if you do your job right, they'll have the same energy that you have to go towards that goal. Uh, and another thing that we need to keep in mind is that a team is not just a collection of people, but rather a team is a set of people, all of whom need each other to get this job done. And so people are going to have to work together, they have to work with each other, communicate with each other, and all be able to pull the load to make this work. Managing a project is sort of like driving a car down the street and if you had six people in the car and they all had uh, a hand on the steering wheel, that would be uh, a great scenario for a car accident. So there can only be one, one driver of a car, just like there can only be one project manager. Being a project manager is many things. You have to be a leader, you have to make decisions, you have to tell people where they're headed, and you have to guide them and lead them. You have to be out in front of them. Otherwise, you're not doing your job. You have to be the one that sets the stage for everyone else. Leadership is sometimes allowing those working the problem to make those decisions, letting them learn, letting them go through the process that they need to, to grow as well. That's why leadership's important. When you develop those people below you, letting them go through that process of learning and making those decisions, 
that's when the team gets bigger, broader, and more strong to help you make the decisions you need as a leader. You should be challenging your team in new areas with the idea that they're going to grow so they can take not only the challenges they have today, but actually be better prepared to take a bigger challenge that comes in the future. General Colin Powell once said, uh, once you have 75% of your data, then you need to make a, a decision so that you can, can move on to the next one. And I, I agree with that philosophy that you will never have all the data. So the most important thing is to make sure that the folks that are working for you on your projects bring you the best data that they have and present it in a form that everyone can understand. And the other thing is to make sure that all of the stakeholders in the decision have been contacted and they have all been listened to and their issues have been heard. In the end though, you're the one that has to make the, the decision. You're the one that has to make it happen. We as an agency have done a number of very incredible things. What we don't do very well is pass on what we've learned from, from team to team to team. Well, each, each of us has run a project or a program over our time period, um, over a certain time period, you get what I call scar tissue. You learn a lot of things. You learn things not to do, things to do, better practices and, and, and ways that you can help the next guy go through their process. If we've learned this lesson, either through Apollo or shuttle or station, then, then we need to pass that on to the next set of engineers so that when we do go to Mars, that long trip to Mars, we'll be successful. Continuous improvement is a hallmark. We have to continuously learn. If we stop learning, we will eventually fail. Most of the great ideas that are going to benefit your project are going to come from your people. And to get these ideas, all you got to do is stop talking and listen to your people. They're going to give you the ideas. And the best way to keep them coming is to make sure that everyone feels that they're welcome. I mean, uh, I'm sure we've all been there. If you tell somebody you've got a great idea and they kind of say, gee, that, would, that really sounds good, but we're busy, then obviously you're not going to go back to that person and give them another one of your great ideas. I think good ideas come from all over the place. Uh, I think part of the creative process is stepping outside of your own project or your own program and looking to other areas, um, maybe even dissimilar fields. And so the first aspect of this process to make sure people bring ideas forward is you, you need to encourage it. You need to do it. You need to be willing to say out loud some, some outside the box thought. So what if we went off and looked at, at this? Um, and it encourages people, that very act encourages the people that work with you to think the same way. People are truly what makes NASA run and truly what makes NASA excellent. You can't have excellent things without having excellent people design them. The driving force in any project is not a science requirement. It's the people that are behind the project that are making it go. They're the ones committed to a goal. They're the ones that are giving up a good portion of their lives to make this happen. They're the ones that provide the necessary force to make a project a success. Those people are what bring you the excellence. So I, I totally agree with the, with the idea and the concept that it's really not the hardware, but it's really the people working together for a higher goal, for a higher purpose than any one of them would do individually. People ask me, having flown on the shuttle four times, you know, what makes the shuttle go up? And a lot of people say, well, it's those big giant solid rocket motors and those space shuttle main engines and all that flame and propellant that makes the shuttle go, and it's not. That's not what makes the shuttle go. It's the blood and sweat and the dedication of thousands of people that make this very complex machine fly. Uh, everything we do is about people. It's about the people that make human spaceflight successful.